Hello everyone, Midland Cruiser here. In today's video, let's do some LED upgrades. So I bought myself last year uh, 1100 Virago. Um, and I didn't like the original headlight because I think it's not very good. It's a H4 halogen, old style. So I thought uh, I'd give a bike a little better look. And so I got myself a Chinese knockoff of the Harley Davidson uh, Daymakers. It is pretty good, it's very solid. It's got that massive heatsink on the back. It's got the additional halo ring, which I like a lot. Unfortunately, I had to buy a bucket for it because the bike's got loads of wiring inside the bucket and it, w it was just uh, not enough space to get that big heatsink heat in as well as all the wiring. So that didn't work. So I had to buy these again, a Chinese bucket. This was, I think, uh, 17 pounds altogether delivered with the mounting brackets to the fork legs. Uh, it comes with this nice uh, bevel and it's a, a spring loaded holding mechanism in there. You have to put these little springs in, push this in, push this into the bevel, all the way in, and that's it. It's got stamp on it. Says uh, D O T and S A E, which I think makes it road legal. The light pattern is is good. It's it's like a flat one. It's not a uh, not an asymmetric uh, kind of style. What we used to here in Europe, but I think uh, even the MOT shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the MOT is going to be due in September. I'm going to make a video about that too, so to see how that goes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this I already put it on the bike, uh, but uh, because it's got three mounting points, I couldn't set the angle right, so it was a little bit too far down. So I have to. Just dremel it out a little bit here, over there, to to get the desired angle. I think a couple of mil will be enough, but I've got, I've got not much space left here, to be honest, because I already had to cut this hole, this big window, for the wiring to go in. So, well, we'll see. I'll give it a, I don't know, three mil, and uh, see how it goes. So, let's fire up the dremel. So, oh. I also bought uh, this little edge trimming. Maybe I'll show you on this one. To put it on the cutout over there on this little window uh, to avoid any damage on the cabling when I put everything back in there. Which I think worked pretty good. But maybe I have to put some super glue on it later on to hold it in place better. I don't know. This is just going to be a test anyway. That little hole over there. I had to go further down that way. It's nearly touching the uh, cutout for the wiring but it's not a problem because it's come. it goes a big rubber bung goes in there. Just line it up. You put it in there and uh, that and I can move it up and down slightly only needs a couple of mil and that will give me the I think the desired uh, angle I wanted so we'll see how is that gonna work out once I put it on so let's move to the bike and uh, 
let's start putting this back on it all right guys we are at the bike the mounting is very easy basically you just put it on the fork leg with this clamp and then bolt the bucket to the clamp and there is one more bolt inside there and there that's the original hope you can see it it's not too dark and i get my light there is one more in there that's the one i had to grind out because i couldn't set the angle right and also i had to cut a hole for the wiring on the top so i can put all the wiring in there as you can see it's quite a lot of wiring in there and uh, the heat sink is well on the big side so that's why i had to buy a new bucket uh, as i explained it earlier so i just want to show you i'm not gonna make you watch how i installed it it, it really is straightforward just use them clamps and uh, just just put it on really it's it's not that hard and the one uh, the one thing i wanted to show you is the wiring for the halo ring because i didn't want to use the original side light supply because then it would be only on when the parking light is on and i wanted it on all the time so I had to find the wire uh, with the multimeter, again, not too difficult, which is on all the time, even when you have the parking light, uh, parking light switch off, which is just right over there, that one. So when it's on the off, the halo ring is still on, which, which was my, my uh, whole goal to, to do. When I say the power on all the time, I mean when you put the ignition on, uh, on the key, then it's on all the time. When you take obviously the ignition off, it turns off. So I'll show you. So as you can see, that is on off all the way there. And when I put the ignition on, it's off. <laughs> That's a tricky one because it seems to be that wire is connected to the fuel pump so as soon as you turn this on to prime the fuel pump there you go you got the halo light but obviously when the fuel pump is off that that still still stays on so it's basically it's related to this switch now it's off and now it's on so i tapped into the that one which is the white and red next to a green and red in a in a twin connector and just tapped into it just soldered on the other one uh, with a little piece of wire and I put a spade on the end <coughs> oops don't fall off You only need to get the power to it. You don't need to get the ground because the ground is is supplied through the H4 connector on this this unit. So it's that easy. Um, that's it, really. So I'm going to include a little video uh, when I was taking it out riding. Uh, it, it was... It was set a little bit low but you can see the nice flat light what it makes which uh, actually passed the MOT in September if you want to upgrade your bike in the UK to that kind of style of light you can and it will pass the MOT actually the tester said he doesn't see anything illegal about it because it's uh, it's a complete sealed unit it's not a boob like uh, them young boy racers put into fiestas and courses just put a hid bulb in there and then you sh you just have light scattered everywhere no uh, this is like proper proper light it's very bright actually <laughs> it is pretty good even if i switch off the light i think it's <laughs> well let me uh, let me say i think it's more than a more than a normal side light definitely just to show you here is the dip and that's the dip light that's how it looks like the beam pattern 
I'm gonna turn it a little bit over here. So this is how it looks like. Like I said, the MOT tester liked it. He said it's not a problem with it whatsoever. And here is the main beam. That's not much more. If you look at it, just keep looking. It's just a, that's it. It's not much more. It's just one more light in the middle, uh, which is the bottom one. The bottom one is off, as you can see. Them, them two are basically making the the main light because if I cover that one, cover that one in the middle. It just takes off that uh, middle middle bit, but the rest of them is still there. So it's not much really what that does. And I think actually, well, I don't know. It looks pretty much the same. It's just got that little throw in the middle. When you put the high beam on, then I just cover that other one, which is related to the low beam. And you can see it goes goes higher up than just with the that's it. So the dip light on its own is is pretty pretty damn good. I'm very happy with it. So I definitely recommend it, especially it costs 35 pounds, I think. That whole whole thing. So it's definitely worth upgrading. And like it look look at the high halo light is stupidly bright. I mean come on. Anyway, anyway, guys, hope you liked it. Uh, the night footage video coming as soon as I finish talking now. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.